Thank you for joining us this evening for our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Connie, could you please call the roll? Adamson? Here. Gray? Here. Kim? Johnston? Here. Lurick? Here. Manon? Black? Here. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to agenda item number two, which is uh, the invocation will be offered by, oh, I'm sorry. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> After which, if you would remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Lieutenant Tammy Moore from the Salvation Army. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless you. <laughs> Well, as we know, Christmas is right around the corner. And though we would love to really stay in the Christmas season spirit, um, of course, business still has to be dealt with. And uh, we still have hard decisions to be made today. And of course, we have to uh, accept the fact that not everybody is going to be happy um, during these business ordeals. But I want to leave, I want to, as we start to conduct business, I want to leave you with this quote from Nelson Mandela. It says, our human compassion binds us one to the other, not in pity or pat patronizingly, but as human beings who have learned how to turn our human suffering into hope for the future. So with that, thank you, Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. And may we all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move to agenda item number three is the consent agenda. Oh, uh, before we go to the consent agenda, if you are here for agenda item number eight, it has been pulled from the agenda. So we'll move to agenda item number three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, payroll and material claims. Council may wish to consider payroll and material claims for the month of November 2019. Good evening, Ashley, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Ashley Welsh, Chief Financial Officer. Tonight I am presenting the payroll and material claims report for November 2019. Total payroll and material claims for the month were $9,342,990. Payroll related claims were $5,351,192. We had changes in field positions of an increase of one full time and an increase of two part time for an overall increase of three positions for the month. Vendor claims were $3,991,798. And I will go over the top um, large vendor claims. We paid DePacto Inc. $952,713 for apron rehab out at the airport. We paid Rush $181,097 to purchase a sanitation vehicle as well as fleet equipment and maintenance supplies. Kenworth Sales Company $147,995 um, for a street heavy haul truck and fleet equipment parts and supplies. The remaining large vendor, vendor claims explains 91.84% of all of the vendor claims for the month. On the back of the report, we've given you information on our November purchase card activity. You can see that we had 1,192 transactions for a total of $327,732, and we had 159 cardholders with transactions. We also had eight purchase agents with monthly totals greater than $10,000, and the types of expenditures are listed for your review. This completes my report. Are there any questions? Questions, Council? Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Move to uh, B, Child Care Advisory Committee reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Anita Willie to continue her service as a member of the Child Care Advisory Committee. Ms. Willie's term will begin December 16, 2019 and will expire December 16, 2023. C, Pocatello Regional Airport Commission reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Mike Ennis to continue his service as a member of the Pocatello Regional Airport Commission. Mr. Ennis's term will begin December 8, 2019 and will expire December 8, 2021. D, Council decision, Copper Creek subdivision final plat approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision, approving the final plat for Copper Creek subdivision, which subdivides approximately 7.64 acres of land into 40 
lots subject to conditions. The property is located east along Surprise Valley Road and is a replat of the Copper Creek subdivision. E, council decision, point view apartments, apartments final plat approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving the final plat for point view apartments which subdivides approximately 1.83 acres of land into eight lots, subject to conditions. The property is located south of Quinn Road and east of Philbin Road. Mr. Mayor. Council President Johnston. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion by Council President Johnston and a second by Adamson. Connie, could you please call the roll? Johnston. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Gray. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four is communication and proclamations. We have no proclamations tonight, and so we'll move to agenda item five is the calendar review. Council may take, wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. On December 12 at 9 a.m. will be a work session. On December 19 at 1 p.m. will be a council liaison work session and clarification missions and value statement discussion. At 5 p.m. will be, a, or 5.30 p.m. will be the agenda clarification meeting, and at 6 p.m. will be a regular uh, council meeting. Other events, December 7 uh, and 14 wild winter weekends at Zoo Idaho from 1 to 4 p.m. December 7 and 21, music in the library, Marshall Public Library. December 7 at noon will be classic Christmas melodies. December 21 at 1 p.m. will be holiday classics, classics, carols, and other favorites. December 12 and 13, Pocatello Regional Transit 32nd Annual Holiday Lights Tour. Tickets are not available anymore. They have sold out. So if you're going to try to get some, uh, get them for next year. <laughs> The Marshall Public Library has shortened at service hours in December. The hours are, you know what, they actually added a bus for that this mm -hmm. year. And so that's a very popular thing. So we kind of chuckle, but if you want some, probably ought to be thinking about next year seriously on that. Sorry, I just got sidetracked. <laughs> The Marshall Public Library has shortened service hours in December. The hours are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Regular hours will return on January 2nd. Community Recreation Center will be closed on the following dates for the holidays. December 25th, Christmas Day, January 1, New Year's Day. Uh, December 6th uh, at 11 a.m. will be a ribbon cutting for the North Gate uh, development. If you would like to attend that, you will need to park your car in the Wellness Center at a, do not be much later than 1030 because we will take a bus from the Wellness Center to the uh, on off ramp down Is there. That the and so interchange? The interchange. Yeah. And so the ribbon cutting will happen on the on the bridge. Uh, ITD has got that going. I believe it's going to happen right in the middle of the bridge. And so you will not be able to drive down there, and so uh, you'll park at the Wellness Center parking lot about 10.30. If you're late and you missed the bus, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we'll move to agenda item six is a public hearing proposed fiscal year 2020 budget amendment for hillview settlement trust fund this time has been set aside for council to receive public comments on proposed fiscal year 2020 budget amendment related to hillview settlement trust fund an ordinance has been prepared for council's uh, consideration under agenda item number 15. i declare the public hearing open Good evening, Ashley Welsh, Chief Financial Officer. The 2020 budget adopted in August of 2019 was developed before the amount of the Hillview settlement case was known. Tonight, the Finance Department is requesting budget authority for expenditures related to the final settlement for the Hillview case. The cash for this settlement was moved into a trust fund at the end of fiscal year 2019. Authority is needed to complete the settlement payouts to the claimants as specified by the court. The total amount for this amendment is 4,500,000. This amendment process began with the two required public notices on November 13th and November 20th in the Idaho State Journal. No action will be taken at the end of the public hearing, and then at the end of tonight's meeting, the council will consider the amended ordinance. This concludes my presentation. Uh, council, do you have any questions for Ashley while she's up here, right? What? Ashley, uh, has there been any correspondence that we have not seen? No. 
Have we had any other correspondence in the clerk's office? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Then we would look for any testimony supporting the application. Any testimony of those uncommitted to the application? Any testimony opposed to the application? Nikki Taysom, General Delivery, Hope Hill, Idaho, 83201. Um, I would like more information on what this all entails and read amendment number five of the Constitution. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. So I would like to know what this is really going on here and why this is coming out of the public treasury and who made the mistake because it should be coming out of their pocket. Share that in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Any others opposed to the application? Okay. Yeah, why don't you, you could come up here and kind of explain. <coughs> Uh, what was the what was the question Nikki just asked? Who's who did this? Who caused this? Oh, who, whose mistake it was? Just some background of the lawsuit. Just maybe we should be maybe it should be Jared. Well, so I know the lawsuit's been going on for a few years. Um, the claim period goes from 2012 to 2014, um, and so any. Um, pilot fees that were collected during that time are to be returned to the users. So that is what this money is being used for. Okay. I have nothing more to add, Mayor. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Then uh, I declare the public hearing closed. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item seven, a short plat Wallace subdivision. Steve Wallace of PA, PIH Properties LLC, represented by Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying, RMES, has submitted a short plat application requesting to subdivide and replat the east 154.4 feet of lot nine, block one, Richland Townsite into three residential lots. To be known as Wallace Subdivision, the property is located at 517 McKinley Avenue. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the request for the short plat. Second. We have a motion by, by Council President Johnston and a second by Adamson. Connie, could you please call the roll? Johnston. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item, agenda item eight was pulled, and so we'll move to agenda item number nine, is declare the city buildings as surplus and declare minimum bid amounts public works. Council may wish to accept the recommendations of staff regarding the following properties. A, declare the following properties as surplus 1428 North 3rd Avenue Survey Annex Building, 1121 South 2nd Avenue Former Sanitation Department Facility, 1080 South 1st Avenue, former street operations facility and storage lot. And if approved, B, declare minimum bid amounts for each property to be auctioned in accordance with Idaho Code 50-14-01, conveyance of property. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve, uh, approve these properties as, declare these properties as surplus and that we declare the minimum bid for the survey building of 99,600, of the sanitation building, $612,000, 612,000, yeah. And the street department building, 774,000, and the, the uh, uh, lot that's in, available, $39,600. That would, as explanation, that includes the appraisal price <coughs> plus 20%. That's my motion. Second. So we have a motion by Council President Johnston and a second by Bray. Um, we got some no questions. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> then a motion by President Johnston, second by Bray. Connie, could you please call the roll? Johnston. Yes. Bray. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Lorik. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item ten: Agreement prime time auctions. Council may wish to approve, subject to legal department review, an agreement with Primetime Auctions Incorporated to auction properties as outlined in agenda item number 9 and 9B. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the um, Primetime 
auction agreement uh, subject to legal department review with one correction. I would suggest that we add that we amend the proposal to exclude the six month provision extending the marketing time to prime time. And that would be my motion. Second. We have a motion by Johnston, uh, by President Johnston, and a second by Adamson. Does Connie, could you please call days? the roll? Does that allow the 10 days? The 10 days are already in there. Okay. Yeah. Johnston? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 11, agreement, sell of surplus property, salt shed, salt storage shed. <laughs> Council may wish to consider the recommendations of the street operations department and authorize the mayor to sign and execute a purchase and sell agreement between the city and Idaho State University ISU for the sell of the salt storage structure located on South First Avenue, subject to legal department re review. The salt storage structure was de declared surplus by the council on November 7, 2019. Idaho State University has agreed to purchase the structure for $125,000 in as-is condition and let's see, the city will have no, have joint use of the structure for the 2019-20 winter, se winter season. The city will not indemnify ISU against any claims that may arise from the owners of the parcel where the structure is located. The agreement is awaiting final review from ISU. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move that we approve the recommendation of the street department um, for the agreement of the sale of the salt storage shed um, to ISU and authorize the mayor to sign and execute a purchase and sale agreement between the city and ISU. Subject, subject, um, subject, subject, subject to legal department review. Final review. Second. Thank you. I noticed that you didn't say all of the S's. I know. I'm sorry. There. I cut out the <laughs> surplus. <laughs> Anyway, we have a motion by Lurick and a second by Johnston. Connie, could you please call the roll? Lurick? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 12, piggyback bid of source well contract for Nampa IBS store fleet department. Council may wish to consider the recommendations of fleet services and authorize the mayor to sign and execute a contract subject to legal department review with integrated business solutions powered by Napa. The piggy, this piggyback bid award on SourceWell source is for the implementation of the Napa integrated business solution store within the fleet services department. Funds are available in the department's fiscal year 2020 budget. Mr. Mayor, I would ask that we have Jeff or Teresa come up and explain what's really going on because I think this is such a positive thing that the public should be aware of the success we're experiencing. Do you want Jeff or Teresa? Well, Jeff jumped there. I mean, you're getting Tom. You want a Jeff or Teresa? Tom. You're getting Tom. I Tom's what Tom. we want. That's who I really want. Okay. We drew straws real quick. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tom Kirkman, Deputy Public Works Director. This is one of the last stages of implementing our new fleet services division. Uh, where we're moving all of the maintenance of all city equipment, with the exception of a few, into one centralized location. Um, this is going to allow us to have our own parts facility within the within our building that will service only uh, city equipment. Um, what we're able to do as well with this is we're able to leverage the buying power of this large company to get us our parts at a considerable uh, reduced rate. We're seeing anywhere from 20 to 30% reduction in prices. Um, plus this um, allows us to not have to manage our inventory. They're coming in with the inventory, they're fronting the inventory. And so we, we only pay for it as we need it. Um, we feel that this is about as good of a deal as we could get. We're pretty excited about it. Would you describe the parks person's relationship to the city? So the parts person is supplied by the Napa Park Store. And so we are not adding any headcount to the city. Uh, that person will be um, hired and uh, all, all of the hiring as well as all the employee HR 
uh, things will be taken care of through NAPA. However, we do have the authority to say, if it's not working, we need another one. Yeah. But we are not increasing any headcount on this, so we're pretty excited about that. I want to congratulate you, Teresa and Jeff, for the <laughs> success that appears to be taking place with this program. It's a, a tremendous contribution that city employees are making to the citizens of Pocatello. It is, and I, I would just like to echo that. Uh, Teresa Caudill has done an amazing job as our fleet manager, and she just continues to excel every day, so I appreciate her immensely. Um, it's my understanding they also will become our parts runner in theory for us, and so we won't have people running the Salt Lake and all that stuff. They, is that right? That is correct. Uh, that's a great point. Um, Part of the benefit of this, like I say, and they're such a large, this is a worldwide organization. So they have warehouses all throughout the, the, the country, basically. And so they have uh, large freight vehicles coming through uh, both north and south, through Pocatello pretty much every day. There's been some instances where we're in a, a large snow event and we have a part fail on a snow plow. We've had to send guys down to Salt Lake in the middle of the night to try and get parts so we can get back uh, up running because the city never sleeps, right? And so this is going to allow us to be able to uh, hopefully expedite that a lot more. They're, uh, they're guaranteeing us an 85% on shelf uh, for our parts. So 85% of the time when we need something, it will be on the shelf. Uh, the other 15%, they'll have it by the next morning. So we're pretty excited. Nice. That's great. You're good. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very much. Story. Yes. I move that we uh, approve the piggyback of Sourcewell contract for Napa and that uh, we make this subject to legal review and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Lurick. <laughs> Connie, could you please call the roll? Bray. Yes. Lurick. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 13, Spiral Heat Exchange is here, sole source expenditure and declaration request WPC. Council may wish to accept the recommendations of WPC staff and authorize the mayor's, the mayor's signature on documents related to the request for fo the following items. A, declare the purchase of three new spiral heat exchanger, exchange, exchangers for, from Alpha Lava Incorporated to be a valid sole source expenditure for the purpose of repairing the digester heating system. B, approve the purchase of three new spiral heat exchangers in the amount of $126,000 from Alpha Laval Incorporated. Funds for the purchase are available in WPC fiscal year 2020 budget. I think it would be an appropriate uh, explanation to uh, let the audience know why this is a sole source. Do you, who do you want? Do you want Levi or oh, I want Jeff Teresa. or I you want, want Teresa? Teresa, <laughs> Teresa <laughs> come on up. <laughs> come Levi, yes. <laughs> Uh, Levi Adams, uh, superintendent for WPC. These pieces of equipment were originally custom built for the digester heating uh, process in 1990. They've had a 30 year lifespan and are beginning to break down, um, getting some small leaks in them. Uh, they need to be replaced. They're an integral part of the digester heating system, which is an integral, integral part of our biosolids process out there at the Dream of Life. And if we did not use this sole source, what would be the consequences? Um, if we were not able to use this sole source, the first off, the equipment probably wouldn't fit in the existing place, so therefore we would have to uh, replumb all of the heating system and the piping system, which would increase the cost exponentially. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I move that we accept the rec recommendation of WPC staff um, and authorize the mayor's signature on documents related to the request for um, spiral heat exchanger, well, sole source expenditure and declaration request for spiral heat exchangers for WPC. Um, is this one subject to legal department review? It's been reviewed. Oh, okay. So never mind that. Sorry, did, you, did you have a motion to declare it sole source? Yes. Uh, sole source expenditure and declaration request. Thank second. You. We have a motion by Lurick and a second by Johnston. 
Connie, could you please call the roll? Lurick? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Wright? Yes. Thank you, agenda item 14, a mayor pride contract housekeeping department. Council may wish to authorize the mayor to sign and execute a contract with the mayor pride to provide cleaning supplies for city departments. This contract will result in a cost savings for the city. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the uh, Amera, pride, Amera Pride contract. Second. We have a motion by Johnston and a second uh, by Adamson. Connie, could you please call the roll? Johnston? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Burrick? Yes. Wright? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 15, an ordinance approving an amendment to fiscal year 2020 appropriations ordinance, increasing the total fiscal year expenditures in the amount of $4,500,000 to account for expenses related to the Hillview settlement. Council, how do you wish to have the ordinance read? Councilwoman Adamson. Mayor, I move the ordinance agenda item 15 be read only by title and placed on final passage for publication and that the entire ordinance be submitted for publication. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Second. Perfect. Thank you. We have a motion by Adamson and a second by Johnston. Connie, could you please call the roll? Adamson? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Gray? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Thank you. Jared, would you please read the ordinance? Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Pocatello, a municipal corporation of Idaho, amending ordinance number 3034, the appropriation ordinance for the fiscal period, October 1, 2019 through September 30, 2020, providing for an increase in expenditures in the Hillview Settlement Trust Fund, which increases the total fiscal year expenditures by $4,500,000, providing that the revenue to pay for said increases shall be derived from previously unappropriated cash balances, providing that all other portions of the appropriation ordinance number 3034 shall remain in full force and effect, providing that this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage, <clears throat> approval and publication according to law. Thank you. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Adamson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Lurie? Yes. yes. Thank you. Agenda, agenda item number 16, discussion items. This time has been set aside to hear discussion items not listed on the agenda. Items which appear somewhere else on the agenda will not be discussed at this time. The council is not allowed to take any official action on, at this meeting on matters brought forward under this agenda item. <laughs> items will either be referred to the appropriate staff or scheduled on a subsequent agenda. You must sign in at the start of the meeting in order to, order to be recognized. As a reminder, you'll have three minutes per speaker and a total of 15 minutes for this agenda item. We'll go ahead and get started. Nikki Taysen. Thank you, Nikki Taysen, General Delivery, Pocatello, Idaho, 83201. Our preamble of our Constitution states, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and do secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, and do ordain the Constitution as the law of this land. And I emphasize, as it was established by God. Daniel Webster stated, I am committed to the Constitution of the country, and I'm committed against everything which in my judgment may weaken, endanger, or destroy it, and especially against all extension of executive power. And I'm committed against any attempt to rule the free people of this country by the power and the patronage of the government itself. John Adams stated, I first saw the Constitution of the United States in a foreign country. I read it with great satisfaction as a result of good heads prompted by good hearts. I have repeatedly laid myself under the most serious obligations to support the Constitution. What other form of government indeed can so well deserve our esteem and love? Thomas Jefferson stated, I however place economy among, among the first and most important Republican virtues and public debt as the greatest of dangers to be feared. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. I am for a government <coughs> vigorously frugal and simple. Benjamin Franklin stated, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. John Adams stated, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Samuel Adams stated, the sum of all is, if we would most truly enjoy the gift of heaven, let us become a virtuous people, then shall we both deserve and enjoy it. Well, on the other hand, if we are universally vicious and debauched in our manners, though the form of our constitution carries the face of the most exalted freedom, 
we shall in reality be the most abject slaves. George Washington stated in his farewell address, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. Thomas Jefferson stated, we in America do not have government by the majority, we have government by the majority who participate. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. James Madison stated, a well-instructed people alone can be perpetually a free people. George Washington stated, a primary object shall be the education of our youth in the science of government. In a republic, what species of knowledge can be equally important? And what duty more pressing than commuting to those who are to be the future guardians of the liberties of our country? Thomas Jefferson stated, I know of no safe depositor of the ultimate powers of society but the people themselves. And if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of con constitutional power. In the name of Thank Jesus, you. restore this. Thank you. Uh, next, Lydia Noble. No other power. Lydia Noble, 2042 Cassius Street in Pocatello, 83201. I've been a citizen, a resident here in Pocatello for over 28 years and paid my taxes. I guess in light of the recent tax issues this city has been having, it's captured my attention and I'm much more concerned about how our money is being spent. I thank the council for all their hard work and their efforts, but I just came up here to explain that I really feel that any amount of money spent on a new logo, especially if that money is gonna be going out of state to Utah, to a company in Utah, is not something that we should be doing, and I believe that there are many more important things here in Pocatello that that money could be spent on. And I just want to make sure the council knows that at least that is my opinion, and I hope that you will consider that in your future decisions about this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, with that, we are adjourned.